Okay, welcome back. In the last video, we drew out all of these labels all over this place. So at point one, we have our external forces. At point two, we have our F2 force uh, on this flow tube. And in this video, I wanna calculate the work being done at point one and the work being done at point two. These are external work being done by these external forces. And we're gonna calculate the total work done by this entire system that we're studying. So let's take a look at point one. So point one, I'll just draw here, point one. We wanna figure out what W1 is, the work being done at that point by this external force F1. Now W1 is, well, work is just force times distance. So that is our F1 vector uh, dotted with our displacement vector, which is R1. So again, work is force times distance, and we're working with vectors here because the direction of these two vectors is important. In this case, F1, the magnitude of F1, is being applied to the right, and the magnitude of the displacement, which is delta R1, is also to the right. Okay, so from math, we know that the dot product of these two vectors is going to be the magnitude of F1, which is just F1, uh, times the magnitude of the displacement vector, which is delta R1, times the cosine of the angle between them. So the cosine of the angle between these two vectors, F1 and R1. Well, if F1 vector is pointing to the right and the displacement is pointing to the right, then the angle between these two vectors is zero. So this is cosine of zero. And cosine of zero is just one. So the external work at point one is the magnitudes of F1 times delta R1. And what is the magnitude of delta R1? Well, it's just this delta X1 amount, which is this the distance that fluid has moved over a very brief period of time. So I'll rewrite this as F1 times delta x1. Now I'm gonna take a look at force. Remember up here I said that, well, pressure is equal to force times, or force over area. So if I multiply this equation by A, the cross-sectional area, I'm gonna get area times pressure is equal to force. So I'm gonna substitute that in into our equation down here for force. So the force here, which is this term right here, is really pressure one times area one. And that is multiplied by delta x one. So again, this term right here is just the force. I've just rewritten it. And then finally, once we've rewritten it this way, well, we have area times distance right here, and that's just volume, right? Area times distance is equal to volume. So the external work at point one is going to be pressure at one times volume. What is that volume? Well, it's just this volume right here. Okay, cool, so that is external work at point one. How about point two? So I'm gonna scroll down here and write point two. Now this one's gonna be more or less the same, but there's gonna be a very small twist. So work at two, the work at two is the external work being done at point two by this external force here, F2. So just like we did for work one, which was force times distance or the dot product of those two vectors, well, we have F2 here acting at point two, and that's acting to the right, but our displacement vector is acting to the right. Oh, sorry, for F2 that is acting to the left, and the displacement is acting to the right. Okay, so if we scroll back down here, the external work at point two is going to be the dot product of F2 dotted with delta R2. Again, the dot product of two vectors is the magnitude of the first term times the magnitude of the second term times the cosine of the angle between them. So the magnitude of this F2 vector is just F2. And then for delta R2, that is just delta R2 times the cosine of the angle between them. Well, if the force vector is acting to the left, and the displacement vector is acting to the right, then the angle between them here is theta, and that is equal to 180 degrees. So the angle there is 180. And the cosine of 180, that is negative one. So what we're left with is negative F2 times delta R2. 
and the magnitude of delta r2 was just delta x2. So this distance right here, the fluid moved from here to this point, and that was just delta x2. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this a little bit more and say this is minus f2 times delta x2. And just like we did for work one, I'm going to rewrite F2 in terms of pressure. So this F2 term is negative pressure 2 times area 2 times delta x2. Again, this is just force. OK, cool. So we also in this term have area times distance, which gives us volume. So this turns out to be negative P2 times volume. And that volume is this volume right here this volume right here. These two volumes are equal to one another. The same amount of fluid gets displaced in this system over that brief period of time. Okay, cool. So we have the work at point one, and then we also have the work at point two, W1 and W2 respectively. So the total external work being applied to this system or being done by the external forces onto this system is going to be just the sum of w1 plus w2 and that was equal to pressure at one times volume plus this negative p2 times volume so the external work is p1 times v minus p2 times so this is the external work, and that means we have figured out one term in this general statement of energy conservation. In the next video, I want to look at the kinetic and potential energies of this system, and then we'll be able to derive this full Bernoulli's equation. So see you then.